Hello everyone, in this episode I'll introduce how to use computer models to predict tropical cyclones and explain the forecast uncertainty. The accurate forecasting of tropical cyclone tracks and intensities is always a challenge to all meteorological services. Nowadays, with ever-increasing computational power, the numerical weather prediction model, which is a computer model and also known as NWP, has become an important reference for forecasters in predicting tropical cyclone tracks and intensities. The computer model divides the atmosphere into multiple three-dimensional grids. By inputting observation data from meteorological stations, radars and satellites, etc., as initial conditions, and then using them in physical equations, the atmospheric evolution in the near future can be simulated. Finally, prognostic charts are generated for forecasters' reference. Meteorological services forecast tropical cyclones based on the calculation results of computer models and their local experiences. The atmosphere is chaotic in nature. One of the pioneers in developing the theory of chaos was meteorologist Edward Lawrence. In the early 1960s, Lawrence conducted an NWP experiment with computers. He found that a slight difference in the data input could result in a huge difference in the calculation output. Just as the saying goes, the slightest difference leads to a huge error. His discovery is commonly known as the butterfly effect. This butterfly-shaped figure is the data resulted from Lawrence's NWP experiment. The two wings represent two sets of extremely different calculation results caused by subtle changes. As we keep striving for forecast accuracy, it is necessary to recognize the restrictions that exist in nature. Due to the chaotic features of weather changes, slight changes in initial weather conditions may lead to substantial differences in the computer model forecast. The longer the weather forecast in time, the less accurate it will be. The forecast uncertainty comes from the errors of the observation data, the resolution of the models, the characteristics of the weather system, etc. When the uncertainty factors are larger, the discrepancies of forecast results will also be larger. Therefore, every time a computer model predicts the weather for the next few days, it may produce different results. So. How do forecasters choose the model for their forecasts? In order to tackle the uncertainties, forecasters nowadays use the ensemble forecast methods. There are two main methods for the ensemble forecast. The simpler one is the multi-model ensemble forecast. This method uses the average of the latitude and longitude of tropical cyclone positions, predicted by several different models as the forecast location, or to set weighting on the forecast tracks of different models based on their past performance and then take the average to obtain a more reliable forecast. According to past verification results, the performance of multi-model ensemble forecast is better than any single model forecast on average. Another method is the single model ensemble forecast. That method runs the same model for multiple times, with a slight change of the initial conditions each time, and finally integrate the series of results as one forecast. If the results of the ensemble forecast are basically consistent, the reliability is higher. Otherwise, if the ensemble forecast shows some possible significant different weather scenarios, forecasters may have reservations about the forecast results. Many major meteorological services around the world use high-performance computers to run the NWP models. However, different meteorological services use different observational data and computer simulations, so their predictions of the same weather system, such as tropical cyclone, usually vary. Now let's take a look at the forecasts of tropical cyclone Moifa by several meteorological services. The model used by the United Kingdom Meteorological Office, UKMO, predicted that Moi Fa would take a westward track, move across Taiwan and make landfall over Fujian. On the other hand, the models from the European Center for Medium Range Weather Forecasts, ECMWF, and the Japan Meteorological Agency, JMA, forecasted that Moi Fa would move northwestward. However, only the former predicted Moi Fa's track would make landfall over Zhejiang. The model for the National Center for Environmental Prediction, NCEP, in the United States even forecasted that Moifa would take a northward track towards the seas near Kyushu of Japan. It, it can be seen that the forecasts of a tropical cyclone track by different models may have large discrepancies. 
During operation, if the forecasting track of a particular model significantly deviates from other models, forecasters will have less confidence on that model. Sometimes, even though the tracks predicted by different computer models are relatively consistent, it does not mean that the forecast must be very accurate. Taking Super Typhoon Talim's track as an example, several models forecasted it would move towards Taiwan and the coast of Fujian. But Talim finally recurved in the seas east of Taiwan, moved across the East China Sea and hit Japan. Therefore, we should not over-rely on the forecast of models only because of their consistency, especially based on just a couple of forecast results. Moreover, we should pay attention to the forecast trend predicted by models over time and make references to forecasts and warnings issued by the official meteorological services based on their analysis of local and overall situations. When forecasting the track and intensity of a tropical cyclone, meteorological services forecasters will analyze all the observation data in detail, understand the actual weather situation, consider the forecasts of multiple computer models, evaluate the performance and stability of the models, and then formulate an integrated forecast track based on their experience. This type of forecast with explicit information on the forecast track and intensity is known as a deterministic forecast. However, the errors in forecasting track and intensity generally increase with increases in forecast time. If we rely solely on the deterministic forecast, other possible scenarios would be ignored. The ensemble forecast and probabilistic forecast could make up for such deficiencies in the deterministic forecast and effectively indicate the forecast errors in the tropical cyclone track. Take super typhoon Mangkut, which devastated Hong Kong on 16th of September 2018, as an example. The computer model ensemble forecasts showed multiple possible scenarios for its track on 11th of September. Mangkut was forecast to move towards the vicinity of Luzon Strait and then edge closer to the coastal areas of southern China. However, its potential landfall positions covered the whole South China coast and even the northern part of Vietnam. This showed that there was some degree of uncertainty in the forecast track. As for the track probability forecast map, it is a post-processed product utilizing ensemble forecasts to calculate the probability of different tracks approaching each location on the map. This figure shows that Mount Kut had a higher probability of making landfall near the Pearl River estuary. In the end, during daytime on 16th of September, Mang Kut skirted within about 100 kilometers to the south-southwest of the Hong Kong Observatory and made landfall near Taishan Guangdong, which was consistent with the track probability forecast a few days before. The ensemble forecast can reflect the level of uncertainty of tropical cyclone track forecast and provide clues for other possible scenarios. Take the tropical cyclone Chantu in September 2021 as an example. The ensemble forecast predicted bifurcated tracks, indicating a high level of uncertainty in the track forecast. Many of these tracks showed that it would make landfall over Guangdong after crossing the Luzon Strait, but there were still a considerable number of tracks which were moving northwards and approaching Taiwan. We can see that there are two branches in the track probability forecast map. The one with a slightly higher probability is to move across the Luzon Strait, while the slightly lower one is to recurve towards Taiwan. Finally, Chantu turned northwards, skirting the eastern coast of Taiwan. Thus, when we assess the threat of a tropical cyclone to any place, don't neglect other possible scenarios. How can we make better use of the track probability forecast map? Taking severe typhoon Solik on 19th of August 2018 as an example, the track probability forecast map showed a 50% chance of affecting Korea in the next few days. So travelers who planned to visit or had already been there could adjust the itinerary depending on their situation. On the other hand, though the chance for Solik to affect eastern China or Kyushu of Japan was relatively low if the planned activities at these places were vulnerable to the weather, appropriate backup arrangements should be prepared. In the next episode, I'll continue introducing other information about tropical cyclones to you. Goodbye!